and gentlemen, I hope that you are joining today from your office or your home, looking forward to learning a lot about CSP and a lot about how the Chinese industry and China come, the Chinese coming into this industry is actually uh, shaping the industry, both abroad and of, of course in China. We're going to learn a lot today. We're going to find out how are the plans in China going on and what is happening also in the Middle East, in the North of Africa, uh, where these companies are now moving, uh, moving towards, as we know. So, no further ado, just first introduce myself. I am Belen Gallego and I am joining from Ata Insights. I'm going to be the, your moderator today and I'm joining from Madrid. And with us today, we have three expert speakers who know very well the Chinese market, they know very well the CSP market. Uh, first of all, I'd like Feng Li, can you please let us know a little bit about yourself and also where you're joining us from? Just make sure you unmute your microphone, please, Feng Li. Hi, everyone. I'm Feng Li Du from China National Solar Thermal Energy Alliance. I'm now in Beijing to, I will share some CSP technology and industry development, especially the CSP demonstration projects in China with you. Hi, Thank Belen. you. Thank you very much, Feng Li. Yeah, so actually Feng Li is going to be able to tell us a lot of what's going on in there with the, all of the demonstration projects. I'm really looking forward to hearing. Next, uh, Andy, please, can you introduce yourself and tell us uh, where you're joining from? Okay, good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Andy from Silicon Solar. I'm in Hangzhou. So I'm very <laughs> glad and honored to be invited by ATA Insights and the Sarah CSP Progress in China. Thank you. Yeah, it happens even to me. You know, I don't remember to unmute my microphone. So thank you very much, Andy. And now, Egoist, please, can you also introduce yourself and tell us where you're joining from? Hello, good day, everybody. Uh, well, I am Egoist Miguel from CSMP. And well, just to explain, not only to focus about the status of the projects, I'd like to explain more about the supply chain, about the industry advance in CSP in China that is necessary nowadays to develop and to decrease the expected price of the, this technology and to be competitive in the world. Indeed, and I think price is the biggest stumbling block that we have, and at the same time, it's also our biggest opportunity. And I think that if we follow what we've done with the PV industry, I think China has a lot, a big role to play in there. So first I'd like to invite Feng Li to please share your screen and your presentation with us uh, and unmute your microphone, prepare your presentation. And whilst Feng Li prepares her stuff, I'd just like to remind you of a few things, okay? So that everybody knows. First, thank you very much for joining. I see there are people from Italy, from Sydney, from France. So welcome, you know, uh, and, uh, and I hope more of you even join uh, as well and let us know where you're joining from. Second, uh, we are recording this session and we also have the presentations. This will be sent to you uh, thereafter, okay? So don't worry, we will send you an email. And thirdly, there is a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Feel free to use it, send us your questions and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. So without further ado, Feng Li, can you uh, put that in big screen and also unmute your microphone and we will be ready to go. Actually, we just lost your screen now. I don't know what happened there. Okay. Now you can see it? Yes. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Hi, Perfect. Belen. Thank you for having me here. And uh, as I told, I, I come from China National Solar Thermal Energy Alliance. It's a nonprofit organization supervised by Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, before I go to the CSP demonstration projects, I would like to show you some photos. These photos are our R&D achievement, we call it. Uh, the first one is one megawatt solar tower system built by Institute of Electrical Engineering Chinese Academy of Sciences. It was completed uh, in 2012, and it's the, we call it the test facility. And this one is one megawatt parabolic trough system. Uh, the, same, the same developer is Institute. The, these two projects were funded by the Ministry of Science and Technology. And this one uh, was, was completed uh, this, this May. And uh, you can see it's located in the same area, uh, the parabolic trough adjacent to the solar tower. And it's, uh, how to say, we call it the Asia 
uh, PSA because it's our test facility. It has another like the window tunnel and other measurement uh, and the test facilities. This one, I think Andy Joe will mention it later, is the 10 megawatt solar tower built by Sumco. This one enjoys a 1.2 renminbi per kilowatt hour of a fit-in tariff. It's the only one so far enjoying a real fit-in tariff. And this one is built by Shohang. Uh, also the, um, the same capacity, 10 megawatts, and uh, using molten salt at a heat transfer fluid and a storage medium. It was come in online uh, two years ago. And now it's uh, generating the electricity. This one we call the modified linear Fresnel built by the Terra Solar. Uh, this is a 15 megawatt. Uh, it's a specialty is it uses concrete as a thermal storage um, system. And uh, the con concrete thermal storage has generated electricity for continuously only use the storage system for more than six, uh, 60 hours. This is sterling. So it uh, like the, the other countries, it's not a well, well developed. This one small scale and only for the Haiti and the generosity because there's no fitting turf. So uh, electricity is not the option so far. So for any industry, for the emerging in, emer, a new industry projects plus fitting turf is the way to, to develop or to promote its development like the other countries. Uh, after a long, many years of what we call the accumulation in technology and uh, supply chain, and um, three years ago, National Energy Administration announced a, a, a notice to organize a number of CSP demonstration projects. And one month later, we got more than 100 projects applied from Gansu, Inner Mongolia, Qinghai, Xinjiang, Hebei province. And for those applied CSP projects, we have a parabolic trough, tower dish, fresnel, and a different number. But you can see it uh, parabolic trough still accounts for the majority. And uh, the total capacity is nearly nine gigawatt. And uh, the average applied uh, fitting tariff because the electricity price is about 1.24 per kilowatt uh, renminbi for kilowatt hour. And uh, two years ago, NDRC, the National Development and Reform Commission, um, issued the benchmark tariff for CSP. And this benchmark only applies for the demonstration projects organized by the NEA in 2016. And this project will, be, has, will have a benchmark fitting tariff of 1.15 renminbi per kilowatt hour. And, uh, almost uh, nearly one month later, on September 13, uh, NEA, because NEA and NDRC have different functions. NDRC in charge of pricing and NEA in uh, supervising all the renewable energy projects. Issue, uh, we can say announced the CSP demonstration project at least uh, with a total number of 20 projects and our capacity is nearly 1.2, 1.4 gigawatt. And uh, this in the document is stated that this project in principle should be completed and put into operation by the end of this year. Then in of which we have uh, nine solar tower projects. Most of, of them are using molten salt as a heat transfer fluid and the store thermal storage. And uh, also we have some water steam, but it's changed later. And of which there is a one using beam down technology, the only one different, we call it a different technology road. And we have seven parabolic trough projects and uh, of which there are two use the molten salt at a heat transfer fluid. One is under construction and the other is still looking for the money.
Then the fourth linear Fresnel projects, uh, of which with the other two will use concrete as the thermal storage uh, medium, um, but these two are not actually uh, started the construction. Uh, after the after the implementation and some some problems and some um, you know hesitation, then we have a new timetables, and uh, this February, and um, the each uh, investor submitted a pro promise letter to the NEA to state what's the expected time they are going to construct, start the construction, and what's the expected time to come come into online we have 16 in the new timetable from 20 to 16 and the five projects promised will be uh, put into operation before this year and the nine will be next year and the two will be um, 2020. But uh, since the project uh, um, we call the timeline timetable changed then the electricity pro provides um, electricity reduction mechanism for the overdue project will be established. But so far, the NDRC hasn't issued this file for, for all the, we call it the postponed projects. Um, this month, we, uh, our alliance uh, did a survey on those 16 projects. It seems now the number changes too from 16 to 14, because two are still waiting for the NDRC's uh, fitting tariff uh, policy. And from the survey, it seems the four projects will put into operation by the end of this year. And uh, this is September, that means next month, next week, sorry. Next week, we will have a, a CSP conference in Hangzhou and to talk about the CSP technology, how to push uh, the CSP development uh, via technology, because technology advancement will be the main drive to do that. And uh, here I'd like to show some photos of the latest uh, uh, project uh, progress. Uh, this one is China Guangdong Nuclear CGN Dolinha 50 megawatt. Uh, it uh, expected to connect to the grid by this um, this September. This is September. It's on the commissioning now. And this one is show Hangdong Huang One Megawatt Solar Tower Project. Um, completed most of them and will be com uh, completed uh, this uh, by the end of this year. And this one is some call fifty solar tower is the the Helios state installation will be done this September too. And this is the one I mentioned just now it's the beam down project. It is the uh, the module has 15 modules. Hi Belen, that's all what I wanted to share. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. It's good to see there is the new schedules and we're looking forward to actually the completion of some of the projects. Uh, yeah, sure. Andy, can I ask you now to share your screen and to uh, prepare also unmute your, and thankfully it went down with no problem. You know, it all worked perfectly, your microphone, your screen. So really glad. <laughs> all right, Andy, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So first of all, please allow me to have a brief introduction of Supercon Solar who undertakes two demonstra demonstration projects in China. So Supercon Solar was founded in 2010, and we are focused on CSP power technology only. And we already master all the technology involved with the tower CSP, and we have all the independent intellectual property rights. At the same time, we also supply the, all the key equipment, such as the heliostat, the control system, receiver, SGIS, and they are all validated in the practical operation for more than five years now. And we also do some project development 
but uh, for now, mainly in China. And we already accumulate rich experience in the CSP plant O&M. Actually, we have all three major shareholders. And the first one is the Supcon Group. It's the biggest uh, DCS supplier in China, in Chinese market. It has a uh, 25 years leadership in automation and control. And also we have Hangzhou Boiler Group. It has a uh, 63 years experience in boiler and the thermal equipment. And uh, they will supply us with the SGS and also the receiver. And the third one is the Hangzhou Turbine Group. It also has a history of 60 years. So during the eight years, we already totally invested over 90 million US dollars in R&D for the CSP technology. And up to now, we already have 136 patents and 21 software copyrights. We never stop innovation. And we are honored to be the only technology provider from China in IEC Tower CSP Design Standard, the drafting committee. And we have a proven travel records. Back, date back to 2011, we start our R&D on a pilot project. And between 2012 and 13, we built the China's first commercial CSP project. It's a Delinghua 10 megawatt. At that time, it's still a DSG. And meanwhile, we're still working on our pilot molten salt system. And between 2015 and 16, after we make the breakthrough, so we begin to integrate the molten salt system on our 10 megawatt project. And right now, we are under construction our 50 megawatt demonstration project. So this is the manufacturer facility. This for the heliostat and this for the receiver. And then I'd like to introduce more about uh, our project. The first one is the Dolingha 10 megawatt project. We are the developer and also the owner of the project. We also undertake the EPC and uh, we are the operator and also we do the maintenance. For the Linha 50 megawatt one, we are also the owner and also the pro developer. And this one is under construction now. And the third one is the Gonghe 50 megawatt project. It's also one of the demonstration projects in China. And we are the technology provider. We supply the solar field and we will also assist them with the O&M. So this is a 10 megawatt Delingha project. It's the first CSP project in China and also the sixth one, the sixth tower project in the world and also the third one with the molten salt in the world. And the capacity is a 10 megawatt and it has a storage of two hours and this one, we are granted for the first feed-in tariff in China, it's a 1.2 kilowatt, as I fully told you before. This is all the key equipment, the heliostat molten salt receiver and also the salt tank. Now here, we select the six typical performance. And as you see, the red line is the DNI and the, the green one. The green curve is the output of the turbine. And as you see, although the DNI is fluctuating a lot, but the output is very stable. And as you see, this is the achievement rate. For the first four months after delivered, it already reached 76%. And right now, uh, it's almost uh, 97%. Actually, the latest number of August already come out and the result is very encouraging and exciting. I will update later and send it to you. And this is the 50 megawatt project. 
Uh, this one has a storage time of seven hours. The tower height is uh, 200 meters. And also we use molten salt, about uh, 10,100 tons. The main steam parameter is uh, 13.2 megapascal and uh, 540 degrees. The annual electricity generation is uh, 146 gigawatt hour. The caps is uh, almost uh, 160 million US dollars. And this one, we already promised to NEA. It will be delivered by the end of this year. And you guys are welcome to witness. And uh, this is the timeline for the 50 mega project. So in September 2016, the first batch of demonstration projects is announced. And in 2017, March, we will officially commence the civil works. And in September 2017, we finished the foundation of the receiver tower. And the tower body is already out of the ground. And in November 2017, because the temperature is very low, on site, it's not suitable to continue the project. So we have a winter break, a winter break. Until March this year, we resumed the construction. And in May 2018 this year, the tower is uh, completed and the heliostat almost 50% finished the installation. And the plan is uh, in October, all the installation of the plant will be completed and we will start the commissioning. And then in December, we will finish all the commissioning and connect to the power grid. So this is the picture for the project. And this is the installation of the heliostat. So totally, we have 27,000 heliostats and each one of them is uh, 20 square meters. And this is the erection of the receiver panels. So at the moment, already 18 panels has been erected. Totally, there are 32 panels, as you see. So the rated power is a 233 megawatt. And the efficiency of the receiver is 90%. And this is the TES, the thermal energy uh, system, and also the SGS. In between the tanks is the SGS, the su support structure. Actually, it's an older picture. Uh, the installation already started, and the, the preheater, the superheater, the steam drum already installed. So this is the Gunghe project. The owner is a Power China group. And the location is also in Qinghai province. This project has a six hour storage. And this one, the owner planned to commission by the end of June next year. So these are the pictures from the Gunghe project. And this one and this one, that's the heliostat assembly line. This after three months, we signed a contract with the owner. So we already set up all the assembly line and we already installed the first heliostat in order to help the owner to reach their goal. So this is uh, all the projects of Supercontroller. First one is a 10 megawatt, the Linha project, and the 50 megawatt under construction. And this is the Gunghe 50 megawatt, it's under construction. And also we developed two 100 megawatt project. It's already finished the feasibility study and in Dunhuang city, we have another 100 megawatt. And in Hami city, we have another two 100 megawatt project already finished the feasibility study. So we are actively 
preparing for the second batch of the demonstration project. And these are the, all the technology and all the solution we mastered. So from the first one, we do the DNI analysis, and then we will do the system design. And also we will analyze the power generation and we will supply the customer with the best economical analysis. This is the heliostat. The working wind can reach 24 meters per second, and the survival wind is almost 40 meters per second. The ambient the temperature is minus 40 to 65 degrees. And this project is on a, in a very harsh environment. In winter, the temperature is very low and very windy there. The reflectivity is 94%, and the tracking accuracy is 1.65 meteorite. This is tested by the China Academy of Science. And after five years practical operation, the failure rate of the heliostat is only five in 10,000. This is the receiver. That's one of the most important uh, component in the CSP project. Except uh, the material, we are carefully very we selected. And also in the structure design, we have to do a lot of innovation. And also during the operation, we, do, we design a lot of safety interlocks. So to keep the receiver works in a very good condition. This is for the thermal energy storage system. It's also very important. If there is a leakage, that it will cause a lot of loss for the owner. So we will design, we will prevent this happen in four, uh, in four aspects. First of all, we carefully select the material. Then we will do all the thermal stress calculation and for the foundation, first of all, we do the insulation and also we keep it in good ventilation. And during the construction, we do all the NDT on all the seams, welding seams. And for the SGS, we also make it suitable for the CSP of application. Uh, compared with the parabolic trough, the cloud affect the performance a lot. So in order to optimize the, the operation, we invent this cloud forecast system. So we will predict when the cloud will affect us and how, for how long it will affect us. So this one works very well. And the error, as you see, is only 10 seconds. And as you see, the link high is uh, very harsh there. And we are stricken by several very serious, very huge sandstorms. And we also develop the auto cleaning vehicles. They will clean the heliostat in the evening automatically. And we also develop some simulation software. It will help us to do the design. And also, it can simulate the fault to see how the equipment will react during an accident. It will also help the operator to get familiar with the operation. And uh, lastly, I would like to share with you about uh, how we can optimize the CSP cost. You know, in last year, the Diva, Diva 4, they have a 7.3 US cents. It's very exciting news. So this is uh, all the information for the Linha 50 megawatt. As, as, as you see, the cap is uh, almost uh, 160 million US dollars. And the uh, FIT is uh, 1.15, almost uh, 17 US cents. So the DNI is uh, 2000. The VAT is uh, 16%. The income tax is a uh, 25%. And the land cost is uh, almost 7.5 million US dollars. The low and interest rate we get is uh, 6%, and the IRR is uh, 
Uh, there are several ways to reduce the RCOE, as you see. Of course, the first one is the DNI. If we have a better DNI, we can reduce the RCOE by a lot. And the secondly, it's the financing cost. If we can get a lower interest rate with a longer duration and also with a longer grace period, we can greatly reduce the cost. And also the VAT and also the all the tax and also some land fee. If this can be free, I mean the land fee as as Dubai as a Dubai supply, we can reduce the cost. And also uh, this is for the technology provider. If we can increase, enlarge the capacity to 100 megawatt, and also we make the storage longer by 15 hours, we can reduce the cost almost a half. And uh, we believe with the CSP industry become more and more large, more and more popular, the supply chain will be better established and we expect the raw material cost will be reduced by 20%. Uh, that's all, thank you very much. And uh, we have a very positive attitude towards the CSP prospect and uh, we expect a very bright future. So as the leading CSP technology provider, we are open to cooperate with all the partners around the world in any possible way. And we try to add value to our customers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andy. Okay, it's good to see so much uh, progress, and I'm looking forward to the invitation. You know, for your opening ceremony for the plant, the Linga. Okay. 50. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank Egoists, could you please share your presentation? We do have some questions. Egoist has been uh, actually answering uh, some of them already, and Fengli as well. So please keep sending them. Uh, it is likely that we will have only a little bit of time. Actually, Andy, can I ask you to stop sharing your screen at the top so that uh, Egoist can, um, can share his? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, it's just at the top of the screen. If you press stop sharing, you should be able to... Can you do it? At the top, at the top stop sharing. <laughs> Okay, let me see if you can. Yeah, I already stopped. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so for some reason, okay. Anyway, try try to do it. Okay, I try to do it. If it works. For some reason, I can still see your screen. I don't know. Maybe my screen oh. just likes, likes it a lot. Oh, now yeah. I can see Egoid. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Open the, the document, please. Yep. Okay, uh, opening perfect. and in process. Okay, yep. So okay. for you out there, please keep them coming, the questions. And uh, Andy, there is some questions for you. You can maybe reply by text. And anyway, it's, go ahead. OK, well, I just first of all, got a brief introduction about the CSMP that belong to the SIC group. And later, um, I explain a little bit about the status of the project. But uh, well, Feng Li and Andy carry out a good, very good presentation about the Chinese. And I focus mainly about the supply chain in China, how is the evolution, which is the Chinese market expect. So well, the, well, the CSMP belongs to CSIC Group. Uh, CSIC is one of the biggest uh, industrial groups of, the, of China, and uh, mainly in the heavy equipment, building equipment is the origin of the, of the group. It's around 40% of the total work but the uh, focus too in the non-marine industry. So in the group, uh, well, there are other companies that manufacture steam turbines, gas turbines, uh, manufacture windmills, uh, the, the uh, manufacturer of the world, HZ Wind, is, belongs to the SIG, and carry out construction of, uh, well, it's a half an EPC divisions and so on. In, well, in the CSP business, how uh, the SIC uh, like to, to focus is well, carry out the EPC and with the capital operation too, because it is mandatory in some EPC business. 
obviously offer two uh, components and equipments and uh, service uh, like operation and maintenance and engineering service. Obviously, we are learning in our own uh, construction of our own power plant that is URAT, and uh, this is and we are developing to our supply chain internally in the group uh, just to offer later. To the, to the well, a little bit presentation about the status of the project that explained by Fengi <laughs> so good. Uh, well, nowadays the Linha is in finishing the, the commissioning and, and there are other projects that, uh, well, they are in advanced status of the construction. And in our case, uh, we expect to finish the URAT uh, 100, the electrical megawatts per ultra collector project, we expect to finish uh, in, in the next year. Uh, well, just to carry out a little bit of explanation of our status of URAT, uh, well, all the movements is uh, done, uh, foundation are in process, uh, manufacturing of main equipment are in process, uh, well, begin to manufacture components of the solar field. Now it is uh, in process, the assembly line uh, installation in, the, in, in, in URAT. And well, we expect during September to, be, to begin with the first ST and pylon selected in the solar field. So uh, we learn a lot of the supply chain, of the, how to introduce CSP in, in China. And, and we, we like to, to improve uh, our supply chain because we learn so much during the month. So in the next uh, slide, uh, well, how is the actual situation? Well, nowadays there are a lot of uh, products and manufacturing CSP market in China. And a lot of companies from Europe should contact to, to these Chinese, Chinese companies. And obviously these Chinese companies like to introduce their own products because they have the capabilities. Uh, they need the knowledge, they need the, the steps to introduce the products first to the Chinese market and later to foreign market. Uh, at the end, the, the purpose obviously is to decrease the, the price uh, of the, of the, to decrease the price and fulfill the quality. Um, nowadays, it will now that in the first phase projects, all the companies are learning. But in the second phase, is uh, the purpose is to decrease the cost of electrical generation, the LCOE. And observing this screen, well, this is the situation. I carry out a little bit introduction. How is the split in? Not it is not general in all the projects, but how is the split uh, of foreign, local, uh, in CSP? As we can observe in engineering, uh, well, it is always come from abroad because there are experience about, but uh, there are a lot of uh, local design institutes that can do it, especially detail engineering. About the solar field, they are full capacity to manufacture uh, a lot of components in China. The unit that they need is, uh, how to say, the quality of the components because the optical, uh, optical tolerance of CSP is so tight. So, uh, they need uh, well, how to improve, how to do it. Uh, they need to know. Uh, maybe in insulation, especially about the ball joints, there are not in nowadays uh, knowledge, local knowledge in, in China. Maybe, yes, in the future, there are several companies that are developing this type of special insulation about STF, well, they are petrochemical sector, strength petrochemical sector in China that can do it. Obviously, they need to know. And about other parts of the solar of the of the solar power plant, well, about the molten salts and HTS system, there are well there are suppliers of molten salts uh, molten salts liquid. About the head exchanges and head molten salt tax, there are certain industry in in China uh, that can manufacture this type of this type of equipment. Insulation, well, if we if we consider a traditional insulation. It is feasible to do it. If we go to start new installations that are in the market, uh, well, they are not yet in China. And about the power block, uh, well, bulbs, well, I reflect bulbs for in China, a mix, uh, maybe about the molten salts and bulbs can be manufactured abroad, but uh, well, more of, most of them are manufactured in, in, in China. For example, a lot of suppliers of bulbs, uh, subcontractor, um, bought, Components to China. So nowadays, they, they are experienced about this. 
and about the thing buying uh, well, uh, well, there are big suppliers in in China about this. Uh, the unit that they need is uh, well, is the the same that uh, appeared several years ago in, in Spain. Uh, how is the operation of this type of CSP power plants? Uh, how you can explain? Is this not a coal power plant? This is not a gas uh, power plant. It is different. Uh, you switch on, switch off all the days, especially during the winter, and uh, you need to explain uh, to the suppliers how is the operation of these uh, components. And maybe in the in the sector that there are uh, not so much knowledge is in the construction, obviously. This is new. Uh, there are no knowledge about the whole how to do it, uh, this type of uh, power plants. And we have here in China one condition, uh, winter condition. In winter, the temperature is minus 15, minus 20 degrees. So, uh, well, in terms of civil wars, uh, you need to carry out an escape, you need to overtake as much as possible before winter because the unit will avoid problems with the concrete uh, and with the erection. So it is necessary to take in account uh, some issues that is not the same in the rest of, in the most of them of the CSP power plants. And the other is the operation and maintenance. Obviously, there are experience with operation, there are experience with thermal power plants in China, but there are no experience about the auxiliary equipment, all these that are focus in CSP and the spade parts. Uh, it is necessary to develop a supply chain of spare parts in China too. So with this uh, main view about it is uh, necessary to develop the, the, the CSP supply chain in China. Well, this is necessary uh, cooperation and knowledge because uh, well, in China, um, a lot of companies like to uh, to know how is the CSP, like to introduce in CSP, not only to focus in China, like to focus in foreign market too, but uh, there are necessary coordination between uh, companies because, okay, maybe the knowledge obviously can from, from abroad, but uh, it is necessary coordination. And this coordination of free communication, it is so important to, uh, to, to be success. Uh, obviously, there are nowadays a learning curve of the EPC because there are a lot of in construction, so all the companies are learning, and uh, it is necessary well, to, to, to learn internally by Chinese companies uh, because it is the unique way to, to be success. It is the same, nowadays we are in the same process like uh, Puerto Llano or Nasol One in, in Spain. Uh, all the companies are learning. And obviously, not only the companies to carry out NPC, all the suppliers are learning too. So there are a lot of questions, it's necessary to solve it, it's necessary to focus properly, and uh, consequently, if there are success, uh, it is, uh, well, we can success in the CSP, because all the world is expected. Uh, uh, well, we see which is located, the projects in the province in China, in, in the CSP projects, and we see which is located, uh, the Chinese industry. The Chinese industry is uh, mainly located in the coast, in the uh, River, Yellow River, and the region of Eliujan, Harbin. And uh, well, this focus, this industry only focus not only to China, focus to, to foreign foreign market, obviously. So uh, the purpose nowadays is to learn thanks to CSP China market and later can supply directly to to Chinese to a market, not only to another company that okay, I integrate your your solution and no, this just the supply, better price, same quality. And at the end, uh, well, it is a resume, but uh, well, I just just to focus. Uh, the the objective is the LCOE to decrease the LCOE. Uh, a lot of uh, well nowadays we have only one big power plants that achieve the expected price that is uh, Digua, and explained by Andy. And uh, well, this power plant uh, mm, well is thanks to big scale project, but it is not useful. It is not mm, in the world. In the world we have the size is between 50 electric megawatts, 100 electric megawatts. So. Uh, it is necessary to decrease the, the cost of the CSP to be competitive. We have alternatives, uh, obviously, renewable energies, but PV and wind are so cheap, but have a lot of problems. Uh, 
with dispatchability and so on. Uh, battery solutions is not so competitive as we expect. And there are, in China, for example, there are problems about, uh, about energy. Uh, a lot of plants uh, disconnect from the grid because there are a lot of energy in the generation and there are no consumption. So they need this type of, uh, of CSP plants and the, and the government expect um, a plant of gas uh, power plants too. But not so big, less than 100 electric megawatts. And well, we see this problem is common, not only in China, we see this problem in Europe. For example, in the United Kingdom, there are big problems. Now, they spend a lot of money in battery solutions, and well, in Germany and so on. So this problem uh, begins to appear more and more because thanks to the interaction of PV and wind, and uh, it is necessary solutions that uh, offer to electrical grids, to the governments, and stability and control of the electrical grid. So, well, more or less, this is my, my presentation. Uh, and, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Egoitz. If you can just stop sharing the screen. And so now we've heard from the three of them. We have a little bit of time, uh, not a lot, uh, for questions. But I'd like to start with my one, if that's OK. Uh, so when I look at the PV learning curve in terms of cost in 2008, the tariff here in Spain was 46 cents in, in euros. Uh, it now is, say, three to four cents. You know, we can argue about this because, um, you know, it's probably less, but let's say three to four cents. So that's quite a steep learning curve. So how do we do the same with CSP? And I know that the amount of uh, megawatts that we've built is no nearly anywhere. In fact, it's probably almost a hundredth of what it was, but how do we get those prices to, to keep coming down, to go to the five cents, to the four cents? Because everyone's saying, oh, you know, PV with batteries before the end of the century, it'll be cheaper. So we do have a competition and we do have a timeline. So I don't know who wants to, who wants to raise to the occasion and respond. How do we get fast those cost reductions? Um, who wants to start? Andy, Egoist, Sengli? Okay, because no one is saying, how about you, Egoist? Because I see you're smiling. Okay, okay. Well, about this course relation now, uh, now the CSP market uh, in China is learning. Uh, so now focus to fulfill the quality of the components. Uh, because, well, now it is the, especially about the quality and the optical uh, accuracy in terms of the solar field. It is difficult. Uh, not well now, it is difficult to explain too. But uh, they are focused uh, mainly to decrease in the second batch. Uh, to, well, to, they have the reference in China of BIGWA project. So this is the reference of, uh, of CSP China. Maybe it is so early to achieve this, this price, but uh, well, I think it is close to, be, to this price uh, to achieve. Uh, because, well, I observe uh, the prices that are uh, in, now in China are so much uh, cheaper than they, when I, I work in, in CSP in Europe. And uh, it, is, it is feasible, it is feasible. The problem now is to focus on the quality, just to have a proven quality equipment. And obviously, when we carry out uh, all the CSP plants, uh, operational maintenance, and check if the performance of the power plant is correct, or is decided as per the expected uh, performance <laughs> generation facility report, uh, it is uh, proven and later uh, is just to decrease how to decrease the price how to decrease the price okay we will see you know for me i think that we need to get it within the four cent uh, in the next say two three years if we stand the chance but i know that i'm plugging a, a number out of thin air so let me ask a question to fengli but also to all of you but mainly fengli what is the next stage in terms of the Chinese government? What are the next steps once this 1.4 gigawatts gets constructed? What, what next? So, frankly, do you want to start? And then, you know, if you guys want to add anything? Uh, next step is based on the first step. So the, the government uh, are waiting for the, the pro, we call the, uh, how to say, the, the product, you know, we, the, the, the achievement Next project, of, yeah, yeah, the project. How to see how it it goes and whether or not um, the CSP has the uh, the the excellent advantage we are proposing. It's in fact it's 
connected to your first question. And so far in China, we don't have the largest scale CSP project, the CSP plants. So we, we, we haven't seen how it, you know, good to be for the whole energy mixed. So far we have a TV and a wind, but we also to see, you know, when we need the electricity may, you know, that they, they cannot provide it. So I hope when the, we have, let's say several projects come to the grid and we can see the curve and we can see how it helps and with the larger scale. And uh, for the next stage, and we have the, we call it the 13, five land, 13, uh, 13, so how to say, five year plan. And we have the capacity goal for CSP is five gigawatt. And so far we have one point, let's say 1.3 and uh, deployed, then the rest should be implemented. You know, you set the plan and you meet the goal. So it should be the way to do that. But uh, still we need the data and experience from the first uh, uh, batch of uh, CSP projects. That's definitely. We need yeah. to see first those uh, results so that we can so there is a question here that is quite interesting. There is actually a lot of questions, guys, and some of them are very specific, but I'm going to try and pick something that, you know, applies to all of you. Um, Alina here asks, do you think that, um, how do you think the Chinese policy towards CSP has been? Uh, is it sufficient? Uh, and if not, if it's not sufficient, what else would you like to see from the government? So, you know, the question is that has the government in China done enough? And uh, if not, what would you like on top? So I'd like to add one more thing to that question, and it would probably be our last question, and is that what the government has done in China, you know, it's been obviously very significant and you have to value that, but also, for example, the fact that Chinese companies are involved in projects such as Diwa 700, how is that in terms of adjusting, you know, the knowledge of the industry, the knowledge of the costs, you know, is it almost more valuable than what the government is doing? I just want to understand, you know, how you see in terms of what is pushing the industry further. So who wants to start? Fengli, you first. Okay. And for, if what we, now we say, uh, is it enough for, China, for Chinese government to do? We say not enough because you can see we have 20, then we have the shortened to 16, then we have 14. So we say the first fit in tariff and uh, you know, subsidies at the beginning for any other country, it's the same. Like the United States, they have the uh, loan guarantee from the DOE to support the, the big CSP project. In Spain, back to 2007, they have the high fit in tariff like uh, 20 cent, 27 cents euro. So it's the support in subsidiary. And uh, it's from the, uh, we call it the central government. Then to the local government, we need now so far for the developers, they say the land cost is very high. It accounts nearly about 10% for your investment. So if for the western part of China, in fact, the land is very is vast, but uh, now they, they charge too much for the land use. And the second is for the, we call it the interest of the, the bank, the financing, the financing cost is very high. I used to listen to the um, Heidi from Aqua Power. He said that, you know, that you have too, too many, how to say, the king, the boundary conditions and which all of them factors to cause the high cost. If we can, you know, derive all, you know, get rid of all the technological uh, cost, maybe uh, we, the CSP cost in China will be, be lower than now. So we hope uh, we had the fitting in tariff and, you know, uh, the financing sector give us a very professional pro preferential you know loan of in interest and the local government can give us and the um, preferential policies all these factors can you know accumulation can push the whole industry goes further 
Thank you very much, Finkley. And I'll allow you to add whatever you'd like, or maybe if you want to make some comments, Andy and Egwitz, because after that we have to go. So Andy, next, can you unmute yourself and just give us your comments or reply? Uh, I think uh, Fengli already talked uh, very well. I think he already, she already pointed out all the, all the aspects the government they can do. Actually, from the technology side, we are very competitive. We are very confident to help to reduce the cost of the CSP. But uh, more and more, the other factors from such as the land, such as the financing cost, they increase our pressure. I, th I hope the government, they can deal with this situation so we can become very competitive. Okay, Bella. Thank you very much, Andy. And last but not least, You've been the last today, but not least. Uh, go ahead, tell us your, your final comments, and then we just have to say goodbye. Yeah, well, nowadays, uh, well, it is true. They are uh, develop a project in, in China. It's different from other parts of the world. Uh, the finance cost is high and so on, but uh, now the industry is focused mainly. First step is now just to know how is the CSP. Because if we see the follow more or less the, the developments that we have in the last years in CSP market, mainly in Europe. But uh, in the next projects, uh, Chinese industries uh, like to develop their own solutions. Because not only it is not only price, price, price. It is offered to something some, some different that can decrease the price that we are seeing now in, in Ligua, in South Africa, in Morocco. This is an evolution of the CSP. And thanks to the enter of the Chinese market, uh, will begin the evolution, not uh, always focused with the same technology 10 years ago. So in China now is in the beginning about this, obviously focus with all technology, but the next project is, will be uh, new solutions in the market. And this is the key, uh, the competitive for the Chinese market and new solutions in China, obviously you can decrease so much the price. Uh, and obviously focus, the main uh, issue in China is to fulfill the quality because now they are focused uh, well it is surprise uh, they are so jealous about the quality it is not the the same opinion of other companies but uh, well uh, necessary to take in account because well in csp it is necessary to have a good performance to uh, in terms of operational maintenance and it has to last the 30 years well, thank you very much, all of you. Thank you very much, Andy, for your time, Egwitz, for your time, and Fengli, of course, as well. Thank you very much for your time. It's been good to have a little bit of an update of what's going on uh, in the Chinese market. And thank you very much for everybody who's attended. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you in the next webinar. And as you know, this program, we aim to inform renewable energy professionals of what's going on. So we'll keep on doing that. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.